Make a difference. Prevent underage drinking. All right. Thank you all uh, for being here this morning. Is this too loud for y'all? That's good? Okay. All right. Good deal. So anyway, um, I'm a recent graduate from Macintosh. I'll be at University of Kentucky in the fall, um, getting a communications degree, actually. Um, and I'm very, very fortunate for being able to hook up with AV Pride, um, and I'll get to why and how that worked. Um, so as most of y'all know, alcohol is a big problem in Fayette County. Um, it's, it's been the known thing to do pre-gaming, like before, you know, basketball games, football games, soccer games, you know, um, cheerleading events. I mean, you know, the, if it's golf, you know, there's still people that, you know, are going to, you know, take a little swig of something just to get a nice buzz going or, you know, it's it's gotten out of hand, I think. And unfortunately, um, I, I participated in it. And I'll give you a little story. Excuse me, I'll give you a little story. Um, my sophomore year, it was the summer of my sophomore year, and um, I went to a Mac Miller and Wiz Khalifa concert at Aaron's Amphitheater. This is where it kind of all started for me. My mom was in Florida, she does, she does real estate, she was in Florida, and my dad works in Columbus, Georgia. And um, so, you know, they were like, all right, you know, it's the first concert I've ever been to. So they're like, all right, we'll let you go, we'll let you go. Well. I showed up like two and a half hours late because everyone else was already pre-gaming. They've been there, you know, doing their thing, shotgun and beers, funneling beers, you know, taking sweet water bottles of vodka and everything. So I get there and everyone's like, hey, you know, James is here, James is here, you know. I'm like, yeah, what's going on, guys? So, you know, what do I do? I was just like, all right, I got to play catch up. I got to play catch up. I remember getting a few water bottles and just downing them. And the last thing, the only thing I remember is waking up and I just see my dad in the hospital room just crying. As that was it. I don't remember a single thing. I can't tell you a single thing. Um, I don't. I blacked out. You know. I don't remember a single thing. They actually, um, the shocking things. The um, the flibrators. I don't. I can't pronounce that. They they got those. And they they had to revive me. I wasn't breathing. And if it wasn't for one of my buddies who stayed behind, then I would not have made it. You know. And the sad, the sad part about that is I really didn't have many consequences after that. You know, I didn't get in trouble with the law. Uh, my parents were very upset with me for a very long time. It was very hard to earn their trust back. Extremely hard to earn their trust back. And it slowly, it slowly got better. But the sad part about it is our, our students, you know, whether it's Macintosh, Stars Mill, Whitewater, Santa Creek, Fayette, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, they think to have a good time, you got to either, you know, Drink alcohol, smoke some weed, you know, take some prescription medication, you know, um, whether it's, you know, a big problem now is actually um, not only the alcohol, but, you know, like the ADD medication. And a lot of people are getting into that, you know, like the Vyvanse and Adderall. So whether it's any of those drugs, it, the peer pressure, you know, it, they, you know, I call them frenemies now because they're not really my friends, you know, they're trying to offer me alcohol. And so anyway, to make a long story short, after all that happened, my senior year, I started to drink again. You know, I, I continued to drink again. And you would think after a near-death experience, you would, um, you, you know, you would just shy away from it. But it is so hard in a high school environment when you see, every, see everyone else doing it. And, you know, and I, I had strong willpower. I went to Trinity Christian School first through eighth grade. Okay, I had a strong willpower. Like I knew what I was getting myself into when I joined public school in my ninth grade year, and um, you know, I was at Starsville Macintosh basketball game, and it was the last basketball game there was. I don't know if some of y'all heard about the one kid who went to almost to start a fight. Well, that was me. Okay, so you know, everyone calls me up. It's like, hey, James, where are we meeting? You know, let's. You know, it's the last. Uh, home game, Macintosh Stars Mill, let's all pregame. I'm like, all right, yeah, yeah, let's, let's go, let's do it. So, you know, I got me a nice buzz going. We played uh, a few games of beer pong, and I took a few shots of Jack Daniels. And, you know, show up to the party, and we thought we were being good because we actually had a sober driver driving us there. And um, I remember showing up, you know, it's, it's so, I mean, it's so easy sneaking into those games, you know. And the, 
I, I talked to Miss Fine about it, and she goes, James, how many people do you think were sober in that student section? And I was probably like 80%. And she was like, what? And I was like, no, 80% were not sober. Like, <laughs> I mean, every, I mean, that's what everyone does, and not a lot of people realize it. I mean, there was a big party last night, and I can, I can tell you where it's at right now, and I can tell you all the people who probably have alcohol poisoning this morning, you know, throwing up in the toilet. I mean, it's, it's just crazy. And um, so anyway, I show up, and I, my girlfriend goes to Stars Mill, and I'm looking over across the court, and I'm like, man, ooh, she's looking good tonight, like, you know. And I see this other guy standing next to her, and he's got his arm around her and everything at one point. And I was just like, ah, that's not good. And she was like trying to shove him away. And I saw that and I was like, that's it. You know, of course, I'm not in my right state of mind, you know, because I'm drunk. So I was like, that's it. You know, and all my friends are like, no, James, don't do it. You know, don't go over there. So I went over there. I, uh, I remember walking around a sheriff. Um, goodness gracious. I can't believe I forgot his name. But I walked around the sheriff and um, I went down the student section. I was shoving him up. And I was like, are you kidding me? You know, why? You know, anyway, I made a huge scene. Made a very huge scene, and that was honestly the best thing that's ever happened because the cop pulled me over, and that's when it all started. I got a, I got an MIP, and that's when my life, you know, changed from there on out. That's minor in possession. MIP. Minor, it, minor in possession. Yes, I was minor in possession of alcohol. I didn't have it on me, but it was in my system, so you know, minor in possession because I'm, <laughs> I'm possessing it in my body. Um, so anyway, I. I, after all of that, you know, I had a really good relationship with Miss Fine, the principal of Macintosh, and she came to me one day and she hooked up with me with AV Pride, and uh, that's when I first met Donald Para in the back. I remember sitting in Miss Fine's office, first meeting her. She was asked if you wanted to come do some, you know, student um, assessments because we're making. The TV series, you know, 30, six 30 minute episodes, and we're trying to get alcohol awareness out there so a lot of these kids know it. And, you know, I've been telling people, and um, I actually spoke at Sandy Creek first time back in March. And I remember having kids coming up to me and, be, and were telling me, you know, I don't think I'm going to go down to PC anymore. You know, I, I see what you're saying, you know. And I kept telling them, it's like alcohol is something where. It's like, you have a bucket of pollen, am I going to go stick my face in that pollen and put that poison in my body? No. You know, the same thing alcohol does to me, or does to anyone else. And um, so that's, that's pretty much the gist of that. I mean, so I'm really, really fortunate to be working with AV Pride, and um, we're trying to get alcohol awareness out there more. So at this moment, if any of y'all have any questions for me, I would be more than happy to answer them. So, anyone? What's a parent to do, James? Well, that's a very good question. I, I'm not a parent, thank goodness. So, um, you know, my I, I'm very fortunate to have good parents, and they had my sister. They had I have two older sisters, so they had experience going through it with my sisters, and I was always the good one, so they never saw it coming from me. Um, as parents, you just have to know, like, that's what they're doing. And you, of course, you don't want to, like, buckle them down and ground them all the time. You want to get them out there and experience things. I, um, I don't know. I would just constantly remind them what it's doing to their body and their health and how it's, it might be worth it, you know, for, like, that three hours of you're drunk and, ooh, you know, I'm having a great time, you know. But it's not worth it when you're throwing up or when you're getting, you know, in trouble with the law. That's the worst thing ever, by the way, is getting in trouble with the law. I mean, I was, whew, that was terrible. You know, that, that was not fun for me. So, I don't know. I would just constantly remind them of the consequences. That's what, that's what I would do. Tell me about being in sports and the school consequences. Oh, yes. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I was a very big tennis player. Um, I've been playing tennis since I was seven years old. And uh, I've been on the Macintosh varsity team since I was a freshman. And as a senior, I got kicked off. Uh, two days before, two days before the season started, I got kicked off the tennis team, and I was supposed to be, you know, line one singles and everything, and I was hoping to go to Kentucky for it. Luckily, I'm still able to go to uh, University of Kentucky for it, but um, I, I won't be on the tennis team. So that was a that was an extremely difficult thing for me to overcome because that was a big part of my life. Um, I got expelled 
uh, or for, I guess, suspended, I'm sorry, for um, seven days. Um, grades are a big part, so I had a lot of zeros, but luckily I was able to bring them up. So. You're saying the athletes and the spectators, the students, are both participating in the pregame or just the... Uh, yes, the athletes too, yes. Now, what percentage of the athletes do you think? Uh, not so much. I mean, obviously it's more students, but um, if, if I line up 10 athletes, maybe like four of the 10, yeah. Are they, you, doing, really at, are they doing it at the school or are they doing it at home? Or at home, at home, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's my question is if the 80% of the kids in the stands, like I'm one of those parents in denial, my kids aren't doing this. Yeah. So how many, what percentage, I mean, do the parents know? Or that's kind most of the urban of, legend is that, oh, those other parents are letting their kids mo drink. Most of the parents know, and that's the thing, most of the parents are letting their kids drink. You know, and that's and that's where it's bad. I mean, I I would go to parties and I'd be like, hey, how's it going? You know, introduce myself to parents, and I walk downstairs in the basement, and I'm like, we're playing beer pong here, like, you know, that type of deal. And you know, the mom and dad are upstairs just watching the game or whatever, you know, flip the channels. I mean, yeah. So it's 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 really ridiculous. I mean, yes, yes, sir. James, how old are you? I'm 18 years old. And how old were you when this happened to you? Um, getting in trouble with the law. Yes, sir. Your Eight. first time drinking. My, my first time drinking, um, probably freshman year, freshman year uh, when I joined uh, Mac Josh. Yes, sir. So 16, I think that's right. 15. 15. 14, 15. And yes, sir. You I'm sorry, did you? Well, I was going to say, you've been to these parties where parents um, have given alcohol uh, to the kids. And in my line of work, I have noticed that Parents have the understanding that if they're going to drink, they're going to drink inside my house so that I know that they're safe. Right, and that's... And that's what you're dealing with on your knowledge of your level, being a recipient of that hospitality. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, with you being in that position, how do you view the parents? Honestly, do you view them as being the coolest parents ever, or... Me, I, I used to. I used to think, wow, man, these, these parents are awesome. But I, over the years, I, how I've seen alcohol affect my life, I've matured a lot, and I've just seen them as irresponsible, and they really don't know how bad they're affecting these kids. Okay. So therefore, what would be your advice coming from a 17, 18-year-old child that first started drinking 15, I'm sorry, 14, 15 years of age that was in these type of situations, in these residents, what would your statement be to those parents? Hmm. Good question. Very good question. I, I would tell them um, it, to if it's a very good question. I would I would let them know of the consequences that could be inflicted on them if that party was to be in bus to be busted because they're providing to underage drinkers. Um, I would tell them about Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram because everyone knows about those parties going on. And eventually it's gonna come back to them and they're gonna get busted for it. Um, I would let them know how much alcohol is affecting those kids' health and you're providing damage to their bodies. Um, and I would, I would let them know how much, you know, you know, it's just, it just, it doesn't make sense. You know, I mean, why, why would you want to provide alcohol to your, your own kids uh, at an underage, at underage, you know, it just. Kind of sounds like what you're saying is be a parent, not a friend. Exactly. Exactly. You know, I mean, you, you're not a teenager. You're, you know, you're 40 something years old. You're not supposed to, you know, be providing alcohol to 16, 18 year old kids. You know, that's just, I don't know. It's. I, I used, I, like I said, you know, I used to be all for it. I was like, heck yes, you know, so and so is going to let us drink over here. Awesome, great, good deal, you know. But now I'm just looking at my life and how it used to be, and comparing it to now, and it's just, you know, it's just, it's not good. It's, it's really not good. James, how are you now accepted by your peer group? You come in peer pressure, kind of got you started. Now that you've changed mm -hmm. your ways, are you able to affect some of the other students and hopefully pull them out of this? I, I am actually. Um, I had three good buddies of mine that I always go to parties with and stuff like that, and they've they've kind of realized who I've become now. And so, like, 
you know, the other day we just went to the gym and we would just rode bikes, you know, like and stuff like that. We've been trying to find like new activities instead of going out and partying and stuff like that. And, um, you know, if, if I go to a party, it would only, it would, it's only for like, you know, maybe 30 minutes or so. Like I'll just show up, you know, introduce myself, you know, say, Hey, and then I'll have to leave because as, as much, as much, as, as much as I would like to say, if I stayed at that party, you know, I would, I would drink some alcohol, you know, so that's just how bad it is. So, yes, sir. This should turn us all about. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, uh, you realize going to college is fixing to get tough. Yes, I know. You, you up to it? Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm up to it, and I, I'm very lucky because I'll actually be living with my sister up there. Um, she's a, she doesn't actually go to University of Kentucky, but she works at a car dealership up there, and she lives like five minutes from the campus. And trust me, she has a nail and hammer on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, while you're up there, just remember us. We're really cool. Okay. Yeah. And we will. I, I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you, guys. And thank you, Bishop. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Are there, there any other burning questions? Ms. Jones. I, are you available to speak to any other student group? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. You just let me know and I'll be there. Up until he leaves the call. Yes, ma'am. So would you say that most of the alcohol that you all use mm -hmm. came from homes? Um, most of it, you know, it, it's pretty like, I would say 50 50, honestly, because I mean, you know, people have contact information, even from people who you graduated from the high schools will come back from college and they'll get fake IDs or whatnot, and everyone's got contact info, it's like, hey, so-and-so's in town, you can get us like five candles, and that'll last us, you know, for a good please, reason. Please speak the jargon, and help us understand, five candles, what does that mean? I'm sorry, um, a handle of alcohol, it's like a... a yeah, just like a, a, bottle, a bottle of vodka, or a bottle of, you know, whiskey so, or something like that. But people aren't just binge drinking, people... Sorry, oh, speaking Binge drinking, people aren't just drinking beer. In our days, it was everything. It's it's everything. Yeah, and it's definitely everything for sure. Have, and I'll, anything they can get their hands on, you know. I mean, Everclear. I mean, they're drinking Everclear. <laughs> Everclear. That, that, you know, I I know kids are getting moonshine, <laughs> homemade moonshine. You know, from Pike County. I don't I don't know how it works. I'm well, sorry. This will be our last question, and then we're going. Or to... he's got he's got one. Okay. Oh. Okay, this so it's so important. It's a little awkward to get young people to hear so much. Go ahead, Austin. I, I, I wanted to know if there are others like you who, uh, after you, you know, leave and go to college, they can maybe carry on what you've started. Uh, that's that's what I'm hoping for. Yes, sir. Absolutely. That would be um, that would be you know extremely beneficial thing you know to all the high schools around here you know because like Miss Donald Parr said. I can, you know, a grown-up can get up here and speak in front of a group of students, and it's just going to go out one ear and through the other, you know. But when you get someone that's been there, done that, and someone who's, you know, everyone's buddy, you know, that type of deal, it'll it'll hit them a lot harder. So that's what I think. Yeah. I, have, I have two. Okay. Yes, sir. One, uh, how you okay. Yes, sir. One, in your mind or in your experience, um, have you noticed a lot of kids your age level stacking? Using and using yes, drugs yes, and yes, absolutely. Because if um, if I was to take a Vyvanse or an Adderall or whatever, um, and then a lot of kids will also drink on top of that because it amplifies it amplifies it and it makes them more, you know, it it amplifies it gives them a better high, you know, that type of deal. Um, a big a big problem is uh, Molly. I I think. A lot of people are starting to get into Molly, and that's a terrible drug. And they'll be taking Molly on top of alcohol. You know, and it's just like Mo Molly. Molly is like a form of ecstasy. It's 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 pretty bad, honestly. It's it's pretty bad. Yes. Your second question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, second question was um, being the kind of cool kid that you were in school. If you viewed somebody else that showed up to a party that uh, there was alcohol there and they were the designated driver, mm -hmm. how are they viewed to everybody else? They kind of look down on, you know? They're just like, man, that kid's not, and it, cause I don't know about you, but when I was drinking and um, nobody else was drinking, it made me feel uncomfortable. And I don't know, I was just like, man, why is that kid not drinking? You know, you kind of just like 
push yourself away from that person, you know, and I, I don't let them push me away. I'll follow them. <laughs> I'll follow them around the party. I'll, you know, I'll just be like, hey, what's now going on? Do, exactly. Yes, sir. Now, yes, how sir. can we change that in the youth eye today? I would love to see more people go to, kids go to parties, show up, hey, I'm not drinking, I'm a designated driver. Is there, unfortunately, I hate to say it, in this day and time, we're going to have the influence everywhere they go. Absolutely. It's going to be there. Right. So we change education, not right. only in the school, but in parents' eyes, too. Right. So how can, how can we send out that message that it's cool to be the designated driver? Um. I would, the first thing that pops to my mind when you say that is uh, Chase Corbett Burnett. That's the very first thing who pops in my mind. You know, that young man was a very uh, loved guy through everyone. And it took, um, he was, he was a student at Macintosh. And um, a big thing that was going through Macintosh was uh, spice. I don't know if you're, synthetic marijuana. And people were taking it because it didn't show up on drug tests. You know, because if they were on probation or whatnot, you know, if they had a drug test, they could still get a high from spice. But that stuff was terrible. That stuff burns holes in your brain, you know. So, uh, you know, one one evening, you know, he, uh, you know, he was smoking in a hot tub, passed out, and he drowned. You know, he's, you know, unfortunately, he's not with us anymore. But um, and for no one's no one smokes spice after that, you know. So it's almost like if someone was to die from drinking alcohol, you know, someone would just they would go. We'd have sober parties for probably a month. And then they would just kick back into it, you know, because they totally forget about it. We need something more sustaining. Exactly. And if, if, if I could figure that out, and I'll work with it, you know, and I'll, I'll keep shooting ideas through my mind. So. I'll give you my card before we leave. So you Perfect. Can give me a call. Perfect. Thank you so much, Dan. For more information, go to www.didyouknowfacts.net.